All right, fellas, uh, we're going to get the sanding unit out of this tank so I can uh, cut the spigot off and get welded onto the other one is the plan. So bear with me here. I'll put a camera somewhere where, I can, where you can see what's going on. So I can uh, cut the spigot off and get welded onto the other one is the plan. So bear with me here. Camera somewhere where I can, where you can see what's going on, would be the idea. Anyway, I'll just show you what I'm doing. Just taking the lock ring off of it. Put some WD-40 around this, so hopefully it'll move here. we get into there's the lock ring okay yes I got a video going here of me trying to uh, take this sending unit out here's my my float and all that other jazz now I have a I have a non-brass non float to go back in there a plastic one out of a Jeep so I'll be putting that one on when I go to put this all back together my strainer pickup deal that looks pretty good Nick I don't think it's too bad I think that's totally reusable I got myself uh, a new a new lock ring and a new seal here to go on it for the new tank so but I had to take this off because I have to cut the uh, spigot off of it so anyway wow you can really see in there now how much garbage is in that puppy Wow Sludge City. Anyway, stay tuned. All right, so I got my sending unit out of the tank, and I'm going to replace it with a, uh, a plastic float because the brass ones are known to have uh, pinholes in them. And if you sink a float, your gas gauge isn't going to work. So, you guys want to know what part number to replace it with? This is for an 84 Ranger. This is the one you want, 17729.01, it's for a 55 to 86 Jeep CJ. That'll, be, that'll fit that float here, uh, and the snap in and replace the brass one. That way you'll never have to worry about um, pinholes developing in the brass float and uh, sinking and then your gas gauge won't work. Because this is just a potentiometer is how it works, right? So anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll take that brass one off and we'll replace it with the, uh, with the plastic float. And uh, like I said, here's the new lock ring and, and gasket for the new gas tank, L003. More fun. <laughs> right on. What's going on, boys? Welcome to Underneath the Ranger. Uh, thank you for joining Colonel Fatso here under the truck. Uh, I'm going to show you what I'm up to. The gas tank's still out of it, so see all those areas there that have got some surface rust and whatnot on them? Like right here. I'm going to clean all that garbage up and then I'm going to spray it with this red oxide trim clad primer. And then my good rust preventative friend, RP342 in black. That's a military grade Cosmoline. You can get that off Amazon. It's expensive, but it works like magic. So anyway, before I do that, I'll take my handy dandy scraper here. My little uh, rusty uh, whatever wire brush. And we'll give her a little chooch with that. And then I'll spray on some of the goodness. And I'll, uh, I'll get back to you lads after I get that much done. 
Oh, poor old girl waiting for her fuel tank so she can go drive again. Anyway, yeah, that transmission mount, I'm upside down right now, but that transmission mount's awesome, by the way. It's a pro thing mount. Um, yeah, right on. Thumbs up for Warriamp, stay classy. All right, now likely you got black specks all over my face from that RP. Uh, but anyway, it does a pretty darn good job, as you can likely tell here. Um, old chassis black. Nice. Nice, all rust protected. Much as possible, anyway. Okay. Protect the old chassis here. Oh. Let the primer dry on there for about an hour and then you hit her with the RP. And uh, any spots that get rust on them, I've done this whole truck several times with this stuff. It's taken probably five or six cans to do most of the underside here. But if you live in a salt belt like we do here in Canada, that is one way you can keep these old dinosaurs on the road from rotting apart. Um, I'm going to replace all the fuel lines uh, just because I don't want to have to deal with a blockage after I get all this work done all together. And I'm going to find my vent line and replace it as well because uh, there's something up with the vent on this tank anyway. When you go to fill it with the pump at the gas station, it'll click off in short order because I think the vent line's got spiders or something in it. or something plugging it. But anyway, we'll check all that out and I'll get back to you right on. Hey, those of you guys that were wondering about this RP formula, they also make it in a clear it's a military grade rust preventative. They also make it in a clear formula. Like a non-chassis black type formula. So if you've got areas on your truck that are like maybe white or gray or something. And you want to cover them. You can just use that clear RP. So it's just a military grade Cosmoline. It's the same things that uh, tools and mil uh, military weapons and things that are covered with from the factory. And all it does is it prevents oxidation. So if you have a rust preventative and you spray on your whatever it is you're trying to protect, you let it dry and then you spray that RP342 over that, that's a wax coating you're putting over it to prevent air from getting in there. If there's no air, you can't have rust. So that's the whole idea behind it. They've been using it for military applications forever, probably since World War I which was a long time ago so it's been around a long while but anyway uh, yeah so fairly soon here we should have the tank back in the old girl there's my old mechanics blanket uh, that I lay on sometimes <laughs> but anyway uh, as more videos become available I'll uh, definitely shoot them to you guys hope you guys are having a good week um, my plans are to go ride on this thing today if I can, uh, if I can tear myself away long enough to do it. It's been raining here this morning, but it's friggin' nice out here right now. So anyway, you can see it's, it's kind of nice out. Nice, quiet country life. That's what we like here, guys. Anyway, thumbs up for Warham, stay classy.